Hello StarCraft fans, this is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another Daily Legacy of the Void upload. This is a game between Crank and Machine on Terraform, the latter edition. Get the names up, bring up a production tab, and get right on into it. In the top left of Terraform, the latter edition, we have the Red Zerg player, it is Crank. Crank is a professional StarCraft 2 player from Korea. He was recently part of Axiom Esports until they disbanded, and he semi-retired he still plays but not as much as he used to which means i'm running out of crank replays i'm gonna hit him up for a few more but we will see how that goes he goes random on the legacy of the void ladder which i really enjoy and he got zerg this time all right in the bottom right of terraform the ladder edition we have the blue zerg player it is machine now machine you may know is a professional or was a professional american starcraft 2 player he retired, according to Liquidpedia, back in 2014. So, I don't know what to tell you. He was part of Evil Geniuses. He might be back, honestly, in Legacy of the Void. Or, there's another GM-level StarCraft II player who is also going by the name Machine and plays Zerg. I don't know. I need to investigate further. If he's back, that would be pretty awesome. Machine was a fan favorite for sure during his days in StarCraft II. He didn't win a whole lot of tournaments, but... He was very nice. He always showed up to different show matches and did stuff with the fans and just kind of engendered himself to the StarCraft community that way. So good for him. And the community is less without him around if he is truly retired. If not, then hey, welcome back. I'd like to cast more of your games. Okay. So Crank knows what he's doing. He does main Protoss. Or he did in Heart of the Swarm. But he's been going random on the LOTV ladder, which means he knows what he's doing. He recognizes the timings for Zerg. He's done his research that way. His injects are pretty good as well. So we'll see how he does against a fellow Zerg player. Haven't cast a ZVZ in a while. For whatever reason, you guys hate ZVZs. Like the lowest number views of my casts on my entire channel are ZVZs. Like I have one from Railgun who everybody loves. A ZVZ that has like 200 views to this day, which is so darn low for my channel. That is almost unbelievable, but <clears throat> I don't know. I think they're fun. ZVZ, especially in Legacy of the Void, can be pretty neat. You can go Lurkers. You can go Mutalisks. Ravagers can be pretty good as well. We'll have to see if either of these players go for those particular units. Could just be a Zergling Baneling Fest, I suppose, but at the same time, it could also have some pretty fun, exciting things as well. Not that Ling Baneling isn't exciting, because it's definitely exciting. It's super stressful as well to play that way, because one slip up and all your Lings die, and then you lose, and you hate yourself for like a week. Anyway, Lings are moving out across the map. Four Lings versus two. Four Lings will win that. Craig says, I don't care. You're not going to catch me. You're slow. I'm slow. We're at the same speed. Took some shots, but I'm going to head on out and scout you regardless. And the Lings say, you know what? You're right. Three of them turn on back to go do some scouting of their own. Not much to see at this point. Neither player has really gone for a Roach Warren or anything quite yet. Or a Lair. Just kind of macroing up. This Ling does manage to get in for that full scout that every zerg player loves and oh no almost got out of range of that queen but again there wasn't really much to see here either so the wings running around ah does see the timing on the lair from crank so that's pretty good stuff we like to see that from machine here and is there a lair coming up or a roach one or anything there's a banding nest actually for machine so this might be more of a heart of the swarm strategy here just a ling banding attack like i talked about earlier or nope ling banding all right, we'll have to see if either player can win here in the first couple of minutes here, because if so, it could be a quick match. But if not, if not, it could be very, very fun times. Spinecrawler is here. The Speedlings are ready to go, picking off individual drones, but the Lings of Crank pop out greatly, outnumbering Machines Lings, force them to flee in terror from the might of the Speedling forces. Might have overmade Lings there? I don't know. I guess if he's going to be aggressive with them, it does actually make sense. Bainling Nest just about to pop here very, very soon. Good inject. Look at that. Look at that injecting from Crank. Fantastic. All the way around. Ling's trying to morph on in. Not anywhere close. They do get destroyed. Ling on Ling action here. Nobody really wants to do Ling on Ling action because they never know who's going to win. Trying to force a cancel on this third base is Crank getting a full surround on that hatch. And are they going to be able to get it? Yes. Forcing the cancel and then just running for their lives. They don't want to fight there just because it's hard to know who's going to win. Like, speedling on speedling is kind of nuts. You watch it, and you're like, okay, this guy has more, but then he ends up losing, and this guy has less, and he ends up winning sometimes. Just really, really hard to say who's going to win a particular battle when it is Ling versus Ling. Banelings morphing in for Crank. Are they going to get here in time is the question. Good micro here from Machine, pulling back wounded Lings, and going to stand in here and attack. There's a spine crawler though. Nope, Machine pushes back on out. 
The Banelings are waddling in here. Trying to get some shots off, and... Yes, they do kill a few lings there. Not as many, I think, as Machine wanted. There are Banelings of Crank's own here at this point, immediately throwing down his third. This is a really good Zerg player. Is it Machine? It's, it might be Machine. I need to do some more research on this. If you know that Machine's back, let me know in the comments, because I really would like to hit him up for some replays, because, again, really, really fantastic player. Fun guy, too. And as a fellow American, I feel a certain affinity to American StarCraft players, because we don't do that well in the global scene, but by golly, we are proud. Anyway, Spire just about to pop for Crank. What other additional tech is available here for Machine? The answer is going to be Evolution Chamber Hydralisk Den, which is, can be a good answer to Muta's. Oh, the Lings come right as soon as that hatchery pops. It cannot cancel, but it has a lot of HP. So the question is, can the Lings kill it before the army responds? They are running back to do so. Already down to about 20%. No, this base is going to explode, and it does, and the Lings just pop on out. I don't think Crank lost a single ling in that attack. I really don't think he did. Resources lost shows 325 minerals. Four Crank have been killed. Machines lost double that. 668 minerals and 62 gas. Another attack here. Just kind of doing dances, I guess. They are finally decided to stand in and fight here. And look who's going to win. Can you tell me who's going to win? No, but look. Machine won. Surprise. <laughs> so dumb. Anyway, the Mutas are out. The Roaches and the Lings don't like to see that action because Mutas can shoot down and Roaches cannot shoot up. Terrible spot to be in. Bane Lings are ready for any Ling runbys that try to happen here. Machine says, turnabout is fair play. I will force a cancel on your hatchery because you killed one of my hatcheries. You big darn meanie face. Mutas individually picking off these Zerglings and going to be able to clean this up. Look at that. They do get it. The Roach wants to kill the hatchery too, but nope. Not going to happen. Crank playing this very, very well. To be honest, both players doing pretty well. They both have their third bases about up and running at about the same time. Both about, actually, 88 supply exactly for both players. 49 workers exactly. Look at that. That was creepy, man. Both players fairly evenly matched here. Spire is getting plus one flyer attack. And Hydralisk then might... Nope, getting the muscular augments, making the Hydralisks faster and have more range. Overlord getting sniped down by those mutos. Just being very active. With the overlords. Hey, lobby players who are watching this, this is how you play with mutalisks. Make them active. Don't sit them in your base. Don't just aim move them somewhere. Find little places you can attack, little angles you can attack at where you can attack without really having to worry about getting destroyed by things like marines or like hydralisks right here or queens. Just be annoying. Harass. Harass with them. Do all that you can to make this happen. Transfuse on that queen to keep it alive. The Mutas are actually enough to kill the Hydralisks. Are they? I don't know. Spore Crawler helping as well. I think Crank could have won that fight, but decided to back out instead, possibly going for this turn near Overlord that is hanging on out all by its lonesome, by its friend Overlord. They're just chatting over this running water, saying, hey, how you doing, Bob? Uh, you know, Bill, how it is. Working for the swarm. Um, by the way, my buddies are coming. Ah! <laughs> The blood falling into the water. It should flow with the water, right? The physics should do that. Blizzard developers, pay attention. Make the blood flow in the water on this map because it looks like it's moving. Although, looks like it's moving here, but kind of still everywhere else. I don't know how this is supposed to work. Blizzard, please explain as soon as you can. Anyway, Mutas flying out again. Muta count looking fairly large here. 16 Mutalisks in the air, 10 Hydralisks on the ground. Depending on how things go with Queen support, Machine could be able to handle this. Yeah, that's pretty intimidating for a Muto flock to fly into. Trying to kill... Ooh, can almost one-shot a Roach with this number of Mutas. That's pretty darn good. Banelings on the way as well. Flyer attack. Centrifugal hooks coming on up as well for Crank. So he wants to go Ling Bling Muta in this particular matchup. Taking down that Spore Crawler. A second Spore Crawler is here a little bit too late. It is going to die here before it even finishes. So many drones dying, though. Not pulling the drones in time was Machine. Spore Crawler doesn't get canceled. Gets destroyed instead. Picking up that extractor would be a nice thing, but no. Crank decides to back on out instead of a stink, sticking around to kill that. The Hydralisks are here. They have plus one attack. Very, very scary stuff. The Lings get right on in. They want to kill this queen. They want to kill this Spine Crawler. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Good Transfuse. Keeping that Spine alive. Hydralisk picking off those lings from range. It does have three kills, four kills. Is now a predator. And the spine crawler has six kills of its own. But meanwhile, the mutas are still here. They get the extractor. Chased away again by the ultralisks here. Double pronged attacks. Lings coming from everywhere. Crank has machine on his back foot for sure. Does not feel comfortable to move out. 
in any way, shape, or form. The army is trying to get in defensive positions against the Mutalisks, but there are Lings, there are Banelings coming as well from all spots here. Mutalisks do have the plus one attack, which is really nice. Plus two attack, about 60% done there. Infestation Pit on the way as well. Taking a fourth base is Crank. He is just steamrolling his way to the victory here. Crank with 61 Harvesters compared to 46. Four Machine. The Lings roll in here, just kind of get massacred. That might have been a misclick by Crank as I'm talking about. But the Lings up here at the third base are not a misclick. Getting the Queen, getting the Hydralisk. All these drones are going to die and possibly the Hatchery as well. Mutalisks. Flying in here to find all these juicy, juicy overlords, the Hydralisks and the Queens, trying to make a stand against the Mutalisks. And recognizing the third base is a lost cause, does not want to lose the main base there. Only 28 Harvesters are left right now for Machine. And yep, this is a complete lost cause. Hydralisks is going to pop out at pretty much the exact wrong time. I don't know, is this enough links to kill them? I do not know. They're going to chase them down anyway, though. They stand and fight. Oh, and the Lings do clean them up. Man, Hydralisks are so fragile. So, so, so fragile. Heading back home, though, is Crank. Is there an attack I missed? I don't think so. Yeah, and at this point, Machine just needs to go. He is. He's got the plus one, plus one there on his Hydralisks and his Roaches. He's moving Queens here as well. He just needs to kill Crank as soon as humanly possible because these bases are a complete lost cause for him. Overlord getting sniped right on down, and there it is. Banelings rolling in though. Oh, so many Banelings on top of all of the Hydralisks. The Hydras on the right side trying to split as well as they can, but get destroyed anyway by the acid. The Mutas clean everything else out. There are a couple of Hydralisks left, not that many. Not enough to deal with that number of Mutalisks, that's for sure. Baneling hits in here as well. A single Ling killing stuff and that's it. Machine calls the GG is defeated. Crank is victorious, and Machine has left the game. So pretty fun little 12-minute game there. ZVZ games can be pretty quick, pretty action-packed in the end. But yeah, I just... Crank, he did so much with those Mutalisks early on, killing workers. He denied this base a few times as well, was able to get this base up and going, getting the gas income that he needed. The macro was good. The micro decisions were fantastic. The Ling attack here that destroyed this third base pretty much won him the game. And that was it. So pretty much incredible stuff from both of these players. Thanks again to Crank for submitting it to me. And this has been Falcon Paladin with yet another Daily Legacy of the Void upload. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook, all at slash Falcon Paladin. I promise I don't only cast my or post my own casts on Facebook and Twitter. I try to post funny stuff and retweet stuff as well, just so you are up to date on what is happening in the StarCraft world. So... That's about it. Thanks again to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far and get, gotten the word out about Falcon Paladin. I love you all, and until next time, as always, you take care of yourself.